One of the more powerful things you can do with transcriptional circuits is separate responsive behaviors into distinct sensor, processor, and actuator devices. Transcriptional signals are useful modularity points in the retrosynthetic analysis of a biological function. Their value is that no specific biochemical interactions are needed for two unrelated processes to become coupled. Connecting a sensor and an actuator only involves joining of a promoter with a downstream coding sequence, without any additional interactions between the two processes. Basically, any promoter can be put in front of any coding sequence. Thus, we can categorize different devices in terms of whether they input or output transcriptional signals, and from this derive the potential combinations of devices into larger devices. A sensor is something that inputs an environmental signal and drives output expression in response. Inducible promoters are simple examples of sensor devices. You typically characterize the function of a sensor device by fusing it to GFP and monitoring fluorescence as some function of the environmental signal. Actuators are devices that input a transcriptional signal and output some non-transcriptional behavior. That would include an operon encoding a biosynthetic pathway or perhaps proteinaceous appendages to the cell surface. You typically characterize an actuator by placing it under the control of a simple inducible promoter such as PBAD and monitoring some measure of the output behavior as a function of inducer concentration. For example, if your sensor was a PBAD promoter and you have it driving an actuator that is a biosynthetic pathway for violacine, you might vary arabinose concentration and monitor purple color, or you might quantify violacine by LCMS assays as a function of arabinose input. Finally, there are signal processors which input transcription and output transcription. Inverters are examples of signal processors with a single input and single output. Various logic gates are also signal processors with multiple transcriptional inputs and a single transcriptional output. You typically characterize a signal processor by sandwiching it in between an inducible promoter and an output fluorescent protein reporter, and then monitoring fluorescence as a function of inducer concentration. There isn't really a name for a circuit that is environment in, behavior out, but it is buildable and with a little tuning it is usually possible to have the function of all three components manifested in the complete system. Here we illustrate a trivial combination of one from each class. The sensor PBAD drives transcription of the input promoter for an inverter, which drives expression of GFP. If we get the ribosome binding sites all tuned correctly, this device responds to increasing environmental concentrations of arabinose with decreasing fluorescence caused by the inversion. You can usually tell by inspection whether a circuit has extensible substructure or not. The question you will likely at some point need to ask yourself is, how do I know if I can employ Bob's ultra-sensitive switch in my application? You'll very often get the situation where you've seen a diagram in a paper and you want to know whether that should port over to a different context. You should be able to readily recognize whether you are looking at a sensor, actuator, or processor by inspection of a circuit diagram. From this, you can readily judge its ability to be modified for use in a more complicated design. Let's try some examples. Here is the toggle switch. The question we need to ask ourselves is whether there is a place in the DNA where we can cut out some output gene and swap in GFP. Also, can we swap out some sensor and put in PBAD? The reporter in the toggle switch is already transcription of GFP, so we can already rule out actuator. The two encoded proteins seem highly tied to their specific promoters. I can't, for example, replace the PTET promoter and swap in PBAD while retaining its normal behavior. So at least as drawn, the toggle switch isn't actually a processor as we might have expected. We would call it a sensor. It responds to environmental stimuli, which are small molecules in hydrotetracycline and IPTG. It is possible to modify the circuit by adding a second gene that placed one of the repressors under PBAD, and from this you can turn the toggle switch into a processor. Actually, in all cases, you can add a copy of any protein component of your circuit, and if you control its behavior by controlling its promoter, you'll end up with a processor. However, you have to inspect the model carefully to make sure it still displays the same behavior with these added reactions.
Some circuits will retain their original behavior and others won't. This one will still contain the bistability behavior with, say, a PBAD TED R construct added in trans. However, the turn on, turn off description of the behavior stops being appropriate. It becomes something more appropriately described as a bistable ultrasensitive switch. Here's one I did when I was a postdoc. The inner guts of the AND gate involve a suppressor tRNA under the PSAL promoter and a T7 RNA polymerase gene under the MGRV promoter. The output is a T7 promoter driving in basin. As shown, it is drawn as a processor, and indeed the inputs and outputs are exchangeable. It is a two input, one output processor, but a processor nonetheless. The two inputs in this circuit are PSAL and MGRB promoters, but those can be exchanged for, say, the luciferase luxi promoter and PBAD or any other promoters. Similarly, we can exchange the output from Invasin to GFP, and it would, we would not need to rewrite any of the model or analyses to know that it would still be an AND gate, and it would obey all the equations of the original model. Here's another genetic circuit that is actually a sensor but looks a little like a processor. It has the same general architecture as the repressor, but slightly different connectivity. It uses the same three repressors, but LACI inhibits its own synthesis as well as TETR. PTET controls C1, and C1 controls the output promoter. So I can exchange GFP for any other actuator under the lambda promoter, and I won't change the behavior of the circuit. There is no place where I can add a PBAD promoter without disrupting the basic wiring of the circuit. I can add a second repressor, such as PBAD TED R, but that's not going to transfer this logic behavior onto the promoter. Different genetic circuits are heterogeneous in terms of the nature of their inputs and outputs. In many cases, such as this one, the inputs are necessarily sp specific chemicals instead of extensible signal carriers. So sometimes there is a modular reuse of a genetic circuit, but other times the circuit cannot be expanded upon further.